What's up everyone? W6RIP and I want to share with you the ways that I stay in touch in the backcountry. Stay tuned. A uh, topic of discussion for this last couple weeks is uh, staying in communications out in the backcountry. Okay, uh, a couple things that you can do is obviously follow wilderness protocol. That's the ham radio aspect, but the way that I do it to make sure I have all my bases covered from when I leave the truck, head up the trail, and uh, get back into the backcountry when I'm down in the canyons versus being up on the top of the mountain. I have everything covered to be able to reach out for help if I need it. Okay, first off, obviously is your cell phone. Your cell phone, uh, with your most places you're gonna have cell phone coverage when you get to the trailhead. Um, it acts as a, it's got a built-in GPS in it. It's always gonna have the GPS. It's always gonna work whether it's signal or not. Um, it's nice to map all your stuff before you uh, even head out so you have it downloaded in your phone. But this is always the first thing. And a lot of times when you get to the very top of a mountain, radio frequency, 4G, you know, it's gonna travel. It's gonna get to the top of that mountain in many places. And depending on what side of the mountain that you're on, uh, if you get to that side of the mountain closest to the nearest city, is you're obviously going to have better 4G coverage or a better chance to get 4G. Um, I've noticed that. You could be down on the top of the summit trying to spot yourself and you have no coverage. you got to get up and walk to one side of the mountain, top closest to the city, and then all of a sudden you get 4G. So um, always remember that. The second step is ham radio. Okay, ham radio. Um, what I like to do is obviously have all the preset repeaters in there and then what you can do right when you get to the trailhead go to the app repeater book on your phone and it'll it'll uh, get the nearest repeaters to your area screenshot it and then that way you have it as a backup and if you get up there and you're trying to hit repeaters or something and nothing's coming through check make sure you have those uh, you can always check those repeaters if there's anything missing or maybe you miss one when you're at home now you have all the nearest repeaters that are popping up on repeater book and you can try that. Then obviously follow wilderness protocol. Uh, starting at seven every three hours, seven, 10, 147. Uh, there's something that I was even thinking about uh, when doing soda activations. It'd be nice to kind of time it to where you're up on a mountaintop by like 10 in the morning or one, or one in the afternoon or something. And then uh, you're obviously up there. You're, you're, you know, you're in repeater land. Um, anybody that's down somewhere calling for help, you're going to have the best chance to hear it. So that's always a good thing. Another thing is uh, with ham radio is running APRS. So APRS is awesome. If you're on the top of a mountain or on the correct side of the mountain closest to the digipeters. So I noticed, um, you know, maybe down at the trailhead, it'll work. Um, the being with the rubber duck, uh, it's not always reliable as if you're driving around in your car using your mobile antenna. Um, so what I like to do when I run APRS is I'll turn it on at the beginning of the trail and I, usually I'll just get on my phone and get my APRS, droid APRS, hit out send spot, you know, or, or, you know, and uh, that way it's, it, I know that spot's already in there. It's solid with that in case I'm not hitting digipeters with this. Um, you could always run APRS droid on your phone or on your iPhone or whatever and then it'll obviously run until you run out of coverage and then um, what I do sometimes, once I get down to the canyons, I find that this doesn't work very well. And if you're on the opposite side of the digipeter, the opposite side of the mountain, obviously radio frequency is not going to go through that mountain, so it's not going to work. So what I'll do is, uh, as I start hiking up, I'll just turn off the HT. Um, if I'm down in some canyons, I'll have it turned off, I'll be saving my battery. Um, that way, but when I start going like halfway up or whatever, I'll turn it back on. When I get to the top, I'll have it on be running APRS because I just know that it's going to be sending out those signals down in the canyons and the valleys and they're not going to go anywhere. It's just waste battery. Um, you know, you just look at it like, well, if you can't hit the repeater, you ain't going to hit the digipeter. It ain't going to work, um, especially with this rubber duck antenna. So it's good to have in most cases, but in all cases, it's not enough. APRS with the HD is not enough. Okay. So with that leads me into my next step. Uh, of communications. My third to communicate when in the backcountry is my Garmin Mini. Uh, it'll link up to your cell phone through Bluetooth so you can use the app called Earthmate on your cell phone and type everything and it's, and it's just a nice big beautiful screen. You got this little tiny one. You can type in messages from here and text messages but it is a pain in the butt. Um, but using the phone and having that interface it's just it's perfect. It's easy. So the way that I do this is I buy the basic plan 
The basic plan is about 12 bucks a month. You get 10 free text messages and you get three preset messages. Now those three preset messages will, you can send out as many times as you want. There's no charge. Okay, you can preset those messages before you leave the house. When you get to the trailhead, if you still have 4G signal on your phone, you can change it online and then it'll link up and then you sync it and then it'll send out those preset messages. So like I said, those are free. They go to anybody you want, whether you send it, put it in for a phone number to send a text message, an email address, uh, you can post to Twitter, you can, and it also sends a link to map share and it sends a link to the text message the Twitter or the email it sends a link to that map share and it shows your position of where you're at so anytime you send that out by saying you know I'm okay or checking in um, it sends out that thing so you're whoever you want to follow you or whoever you want to keep an eye on you and know whether you're at it at all times you can do you, you know every time you send that preset it's free and people can see where you're at so you're always so when APRS isn't working, that's kind of like what this is doing. It's sending out your spot. So on top of that, in your preset messages, you can set it up to where it'll spot to Soda Spotter, um, which is a pretty unique feature. Um, when you, are, if you know what mountain you're going to, you can set up that preset in here. And when you get up there, I link mine through my watch. So you could go in here and find your presets. They're already going to be in there. You don't need your phone or anything. You hit preset, it'll send it. I link it up to my my watch so I can go to the, you know, it's Garmin, Garmin. So I go up to that and I just do it for my watch. You know, hit my presets, boom, and I'll spot to soda. It'll say, you know, checking in on the trail, everything's fine. Now another, th so what I normally do with those when I set up those presets is I put don't reply unless emergency because if you send it randomly and they just think like, oh, cool, I'm going to send a text message back saying, you know, thank you or you hope everything's well or you know blah 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 um it counts as one of your 10 text messages so um so you send out a free message but if you receive something from one of those people that you just sent something to uh it, it counts towards your 10. so one reason i went with the basic plan versus the next step up is you, if you do the math uh, i think you get like another another 30 or 40 text messages and if you take the text messages and time it times it by 10 it, it kind of comes out the, like the same. It's, I don't know. It, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it. Um, I did it before and I was like, it almost matched up to like 40 bucks a month. It was, it was weird. So anyways, that's why I just do the $12 a month. And you don't, you're not going to be on the trail every, you know, where you hopefully you will be out every weekend, but maybe you're out only twice a month. There's no point in paying 40 bucks, um, 40 or 50 bucks a month if you're only going to be out there a couple times using this. So you got to go with the basic plan, use your free presets. You're always in touch with this thing. I was in the middle of Death Valley. I was in touch. I was in the middle of the, the valley of the mountains, in touch, down in the canyons, in touch, okay, through text. And they can text back and forth. Um, I mean, you really can't beat it. So ham radio is, is awesome, but that's that middle ground between cell phone and satellite. Um, if, if you're in like a town with a lot of repeaters, obviously ham radio is the way to go. But if you're in the middle of nowhere, this is the way to go. And uh, when you're really in need of help, you can SOS and, and get your help. And then along with this, when you set up your plan, you can get, um, there's like an insurance in it that you can buy and it's good for like $100,000 or a million dollars. There's some type of coverage that it covers the helicopter rescue and this and that and all the other good stuff. So. Um, look at all those features, but that's the plan and that's the way I do it. it made the most sense to me. Okay, one more thing with the Garmin, it also does free testing, so it's a good idea when you get to your location, you can send out a test. And um, you send out a test and within a few minutes it'll respond back, test good, and then you know you're good to go, you're online, everything's working right. So something else to add is the use of a personal locator beacon. Uh, they run 250, 300 bucks. There's a couple different brands out there. Um, those are good devices to have. Um, however, I chose to go with the Garmin instead because of the communications involved. 
Um, when you call out for help, you are now direct communication with the rescue teams that are on their way to get you. You can update them with uh, injuries or trail reports or you know kind of what happened uh you're you're feeding them information on what to expect when they get to you um you know what type of injuries do they need to take care of so they know what to bring so anyways it's always that the communications part is huge with me okay the, the beacon will send out your location but they're going to be close until they get there um from what i understand um it's better to be in con Communication. Now, the whole thing about this is communications. It's not just throwing out a you know a cry for help, but it being in communication, being in communication with your teammates. You can also use this Garmin to talk to your buddy who might have a Garmin somewhere else. Garmin to Garmin, it works. You can text to text, everything through satellite. So, <clears throat> and then you could also you know choose the personal locator beacon on top of this. But again, that's not enough. You got to have a ham radio. Okay, if uh, you're out on the trail, out on the mountain roads, and something happens to your vehicle, you're 15 miles out, and you're in a winter storm, um, are you going to call for a helicopter rescue, or are you going to call for a tow truck or a buddy that can come out and try to tow you out, or somebody that can bring uh, some some tools and parts to replace your axle, or you know, and it, I mean, there's all kinds of different things that you're gonna. It, it's the middle ground. The ham radio is the middle ground between. You know, in case you don't need to call for a helicopter rescue, basically. <laughs> that's that's the thing. So you are in communications with your buddies on the trail, your hiker team, when you guys are hiking and you can't keep pace with each other, and you uh, one person goes up ahead about a quarter mile and another one loses the trail, at least you're in communication. Hey, where'd you go? Where'd you turn? Come back this way. You know, there's all kinds of different ways to do this. Um, if you only have a personal locator beacon, you're not in communication with your with your buddies. Your hiking mates, you're um, at home, um, you're not in communication, okay? So that's why a personal locator beacon is not enough. It's good to have for worst case scenario emergency, but it's not enough. You need your different phases of communications. That's why I say cell phone, a ham radio, and a Garmin, okay? Uh, totally up to you if you'd rather have a personal locator beacon instead of a Garmin, totally up to you. This just adds the communication part to it, which is totally invaluable to me in my mind. Like this is super important being able to communicate. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Let me know down below whether I missed something or if you have any other kind of ideas or tweaks or, or hacks that uh, maybe something I missed and um, or if I'm overkill, let me know. But I just think that I, I like going out and getting away, but you got to be able to stay in touch. You got to be able to get back. You got to be able to, you know, call for help. You got to be able to, uh, you know, respond to those uh, people that are in need. Um, along with ham radio, you obviously are listening to help others. You know, when you're uh, listening to Wheeler's protocol, and you hope that people are out there and they're smart enough and clever enough to have a ham radio, have a license, and call for help um, on five two during Wheeler's for Wheeler's protocol, and then. Um, I mean, just follow those rules and just remember, set an alarm in your phone for, you know, when you're out on the trail, seven, 10, you know, set a timer for every three hours and get on there for five minutes. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And uh, if I miss anything, please put it down below so others can see it. And uh, any questions, any comments, go down below and I'll answer them up. So answer all my questions. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe. And I got more videos to come. So I appreciate it. And I am still working on this uh, giveaway right now. There's all kinds of YouTube rules and laws and all this junk. So I'm, I'm putting together. I have a really good idea the way I want to do it. I just want to make sure I do it right so I don't get any kind of YouTube violations. So uh, that'll be coming soon too. Uh, sorry that took so long if anybody's waiting or, or wondering. But uh, it's, on, it's underway. So thanks for watching. Peace.